Ladies and gentlemen, Platform 
and uh, YouTube from various parts of our world. First of all, I would like to welcome our most dynamic Honorable Vice Chancellor who has been present here physically and uh, when we started discussing about this international symposium and about the resource persons, he was very much encouraging and he has asked to do certain things before starting this uh, symposium. And of course, uh, recently also, he has uh, uh, been talking about this uh, very important topic, which is uh, being uh, very, very vital, important to be proclaimed and has to be uh, given awareness to most of the people uh, that is mental health. We talk all the time about mental health, but not about mental health. So our Vice Chancellor was very much keen about uh, talking about the mental health and the psychological well-being, particularly the target group is adolescents today. So I thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor for permitting us and also the management for giving all the support to conduct this uh, uh, seminar. And uh, I must, uh, once again, I thank you very much, sir, for coming physically. And uh, you are here to give us a talk also. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, presidential address which you are going to give. And uh, apart from that, I would like to welcome uh, two resource persons, very, very uh, eminent people. One is uh, Madam Guru Baxter, family therapist from Norway. Madam has joined virtually and uh, she has already joined before we start this program. Uh, I personally thank uh, Madam Guru for joining us second time. I already see uh, extended support while uh, we were in lockdown. We conducted some programs uh, and during the lockdown time also she was giving a lot of tips to the parents and children uh, during the COVID time. And uh, I thank you Madam for accepting our invitation and uh, being preparing for this uh, uh, symposium for a very long time. And I personally thank you uh, and welcome you for this session Madam. And uh, apart from that I thank our friend Ivan from Norway, uh, who is instrumental in uh, uh, making this happen and uh, sponsoring uh, this yeah. program, uh, uh, particularly regard to the external examiner, external uh, resource person. And I also welcome uh, the next resource person, the teacher, trainer, and the mental health therapist, uh, Dr. Sivakumar Kalyamuthi, uh, a very renowned uh, psychiatric counselor in our region. And uh, we have been putting him for a very long time to come and give a talk to our students. And uh, he has graciously accepted this invitation and he has come to uh, discuss about family dynamics and uh, behavior of adolescents, particularly related to the well-being of adolescents today. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sukumar, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, talk about him. He is, uh, in my uh, days, college days, he's uh, our super senior and he has uh, been a person uh, going around uh, being a practitioner and uh, even an academician and a very hardened researcher. And he has been helping a lot of children to come out of their health issues uh, and uh, have a well-being life. Uh, thank you so much for uh, today's presence. And I also welcome all the... All the... Our invitation and joined uh, uh, joined uh, virtually, and also uh, the students who are before me, MSW students and uh, uh, from education department uh, students, um, particularly who, uh, our social students who have backed this program, and uh, we have we got a registration from various part of the globe also like Malawi, Zambia, Norway, uh, and apart from that in. Uh, in our India also, Urmu uh, Dhanashmi College, Aringarana Government Arts College Ministry, Bharadidas University, Nehru College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore, Jamal Mumud College, Hansover College, and our uh, our institution, various departments, students, all uh, registered and I hope they would have joined virtually. 
and I welcome you once again for this program and I welcome uh, my department staff, Dr. Nyan Raj, who has been uh, the organizing secretary and uh, doing a lot of work for this conference and also Dr. Parameswaran for uh, backing up this program and uh, I hope this program will give a lot of insight about various mental health issues, particularly uh, life after COVID uh, will be the topic we handled by our resource person from Norway. Uh, so today's session, kindly uh, bear with us and we want to stick on to the time to complete it by 4 o'clock. So we will try to complete it uh, before time also. Thank you so much for, and welcome you all once again. And I thank all the uh, support staff who have been uh, backing up this program. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for welcoming our audience so well, sir. Now I'd like to kindly invite our Vice Chancellor, Dr. Veli Sami, to honor our guest. FSSM of our university, Dr. P. Vijayalakshmi, for encouraging and facilitating the gathering and joining virtually. Thank you. Let us now welcome the man who might not need any introduction and well known among all of us for his wisdom and his knowledge, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Vedas Ami, to deliver the presidential address. Family dynamics and behavioral 
other sense uh, by uh, Dr. Shivakumar and Kalyamurthy. I hope uh, you will uh, definitely will uh, enjoy uh, uh, their uh, lecture. Uh, actually, uh, uh, in connection with uh, this international symposium of uh, and mental health, uh, mental health of adolescents is a crucial period for developing social and emotional habits important for mental well-being. These include adopting healthy sleep patterns, exercising regularly, developing uh, coping problem solving and interpersonal skill and learning to manage emotions. The psychological well-being of adolescents means being content with life and understanding an abundance of positive emotions when joined with the absence of psychopathology is linked with the greatest uh, academic function, social skills and support and physical health being a stage that uh, lays a strong foundation for future. So that is the main topic. If you look at it uh, globally, one in seven, the age group 10 to 19 year olds experiences a mental disorder accounting for 13% of the global burden of disease in this age group. Depression, anxiety and behavior disorders are among the leading causes of illness and disability among adolescents. Suicide is the fourth leading cause of death among age group 15-19 years old. The consequences of uh, failing to address adolescent mental health conditions extend to adulthood impairing both physical and mental health and limiting opportunities to lead fulfilling lives as adults. Uh, so, uh, generally if you uh, look at it, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the mental health uh, the reasons, adolescence is a crucial period developing social and emotional habits important for mental well-being. This uh, uh, multiple factors affect mental health. The more risk factors adolescents are exposed to the greater the potential impact on their mental health. Factors that can contribute to stress during adolescence include exposure to adversity, uh, adversity pressure to con uh, <coughs> conform with the peers and uh, exploration of identity, media influence and gender norms can ex exacerbate the disparity between adolescents, lived reality and their perception or aspiration for the future. Other important determinants include the quality of their home, life, relations with peers, violence, and uh, horse presenting, uh, and, and uh, se severe and socioeconomic problems are recognized risk to mental health. Some adolescents are at great risk of mental health conditions due to their living conditions, stigma, uh, uh, description or exclusion or lack of access to quality support and services. This includes adolescents living in a humanitarian and fragile settings, adolescents with chronic illness, autism, spectrum disorder, and an intellectual disability or other uh, neurological condition, pregnant adolescents, adolescent parents, or those on early or forced marriages, orphans, and adolescents from minority ethnic or sexual backgrounds or other discriminated groups. Uh, so these are the general disorders you generally observe, uh, but uh, for this, uh, uh, the promotion and prevention, if you look at it, uh, for this problem, mental health promotion and prevention intervention aim to strengthen the individual's capacity to regulate emotions, enhance alternatives to risk-taking behaviors, builds resilience for managing difficult situations and adversity, and promote supportive and social environment and social networks. Uh, these programs require a multi-level approach with varied delivery, uh, and delivery platform. For example, digital media, health or social care settings, schools or the community, and varied uh, strategies to reach uh, adolescents, particularly the most vulnerable. World Health Organization, the response in this regard, we found that uh, World Health Organization works on strategies programs and tools to assist governments responding to the health needs of adolescents. For example, the Helping Adolescents Thrive initiative is a joint World Health Organization UNICEF effort to strengthen policies 
and programs for the mental health of adolescents. More specifically, the efforts made through the initiative are to promote mental health and prevent mental health conditions. They are also intended to help prevent self-harm and other risk behavior such as harmful use of alcohol, drugs that have a negative impact on the mental and physical health of young people. World Health Organization has also developed a module on child and adolescent mental and behavioral disorder as part of the uh, intervention guide 2.0. This guide provides evidence-based clinical protocol for the assessment and management of a range of mental health conditions and uh, non-specialized uh, care settings. Furthermore, World Health Organization developing and testing scalable psychological intervention to address the emotional disorders of adolescents and guidance on mental health service for adolescents. So you can understand that uh, uh, even World Health Organization, how much importance giving uh, to solve this problem. So the, uh, normally we, say, uh, we expect uh, the youngsters should go in a constructive path. The India, uh, people used to say, the world at present is a second uh, youngest generation in the age group probably uh, from 18 to 45. If uh, they are healthy, then only the India can become a, a developed nation. That's why Dr. APG Abdul Kalam was expecting that in 2020, India, all uh, in, uh, youngsters will work towards a protective part, a constructive part, uh, then definitely the India will come up. But anyhow, the pandemic, uh, COVID, all that has come and spoiled the situation. But in, the, in 2034, the India will have the youngest population among the world first than China. As I say, definitely the India will, uh, uh, if uh, youngsters are healthy, then uh, uh, mental health also is important for uh, work in a, a constructive way, not in destructive part. If uh, the health is well, the uh, wealth of a nation also. So the health is much, much important as a youngster. Uh, for that, what we need is a uh, yeah, discipline is much, much important in life. <coughs> what the clear, I used to say very often, if, uh, <coughs> what he has uh, uh, promoted is first priority as given uh, for discipline in any walk of life. So if you are disciplined person, the education and other things automatically will come. So I hope that you youngsters follow this principle and uh, you will also become healthy person so that you will be also happy. You make the family and your service also happy and nation also happy. So once again, I congratulate uh, the Department of uh, Social Works for organizing this event. You ought to organize many more events like this, uh, which is highly useful for youngsters. So thank you very much for giving the opportunity. Wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your enormous speech. Your words will always motivate us to lead a successful life. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the core agenda of our symposium. That is to hear the speech on the topic, Life After COVID, How to Build Character, from our guest, Mrs. Bureau Brekestad. Without any further ado, I would like to call Ms. Hazel from first year MSW student to introduce our guest. Good afternoon, and my wishes to the honorable guests and respected people over here. I am privileged in introducing Mrs. Gura Brigstad from Stavanger, Norway. She came to this earth on 23rd of March 1982. She speaks well and truthfully about the vulnerable signs of life. Through her, through her, patients with youths and leaders, she shares life and what is helping people when they are suffering from different types of difficulties. She has more than 15 years of experience from working with child care, teaching and counseling in schools and organizations. Now, she is teaching parents how to process important experience to be better parents and to learn how to practice self-care and comfort. She is also working as a therapist and teacher in a boarding school counseling and teaching students to be more independent and able to take better care of their own physical and mental health. She is down to earth and makes people set affordable goals. 
to say about Mrs. Giro's career and profession, she finished BSW, continuing education as a family therapist in systemic thinking, participating in communication and culture studies. Ma'am started working with child welfare for first three years, building a program for residents and then working as a youth counselor and speaker in camps for a large youth organization for five years. Then, Mrs. Kiro started a social worker in youth school for three years, working with immigrants with special learning difficulties. After 11 years of a journey, with this experience in 2014, she started her own practice as a therapist and speaker. From 2017, she works for students with mental health difficulties. As a whole, Mrs. Giro is an effective organizer with clear leadership, good speaker, credible role model, leader in youth camps, and unpretentious person. We graciously welcome you to Inspire Us, ma'am. Thank you so much for uh, that lovely introducing, and thank you for having me. I feel very humble and very grateful to be here. And I wish I could be there with you in the same room. Um, I'm very grateful for our fellowship and for everyone who is standing behind this uh, day and making that day happen. I think it's very important that we talk about uh, mental health and uh, how we can uh, find out how to live life uh, in a good way. And I want to thank um, especially you, Dr. As Nanaraj for for uh, our friendship and for inviting me to uh, to speak to you right now. Um, when I was younger, I got yelled at for speaking too much, uh, and I was uh, yelled at because I was talking in uh, the wrong places and at the wrong times, um, speaking when everyone else was speaking, when the teacher was <laughs> maybe speaking or talking. Um, so I'm grateful that I get this opportunity to speak and I also know that I have sometimes talked other people down and I try to live differently today and, um, and use the time I get to, to speak to talk other people up and to help people and lift them up instead of only lifting myself up because sometimes we, we do that and uh, I'm grateful for, for this time so thank you. You can, I want to talk to you about life after COVID and I was thinking, uh, what am I going to talk about? What is important now when we're not longer uh, in the worst times of COVID, but after the, de the, the life that is, is to come? And I started to think about school because I work in, in this boarding school and I know that I'm talking to a lot of students today. And I was thinking about the characters that we try to get and that's how I started to think about how do we build character for life, not only to get some kind of number or um, letter, but how do we build character. You can take up the next picture. I was thinking about our dreams and our goals. And I don't know what about you, what do you dream of? How do you picture your life? Or how do you want your life to become? And maybe more important, who do you want to be? When we marry, we marry for better and for worse. And that sounds very beautiful in the uh, fairy tales and in the movies. But for the people who stays in those kind of marriages, it can be a lot of hard work and the worst days they come. But when we are getting married and we are in the start of the relationship, we might only think about the good things that are to come. And maybe we don't even think about how do we invest in those good days while we have our, our head above the water and, and uh, can swim, how do we invest for the storms that will come? And how do we do that in life? How do we build character and how do we prepare for the worst times that might come? When we're still able, where do we start? And this is a lot of big questions. I know, I'm going to try to make them a bit smaller so that we can manage. You can take up the next 
picture. My name is Giro Brekstad, as I said in the beginning, and I know that my name is hard to pronounce. That's why my children's names are Jonathan and Rebecca, so that they might have a bit easier way when they're going to talk to people in English. I live in Stavanger in Norway and work as a social worker and a counselor for particularly youth, but also, also for parents these days. Um, and even though I work as a professional when it comes to this, I'm still a human. I'm still a human and I make mistakes. And I'm thinking about all the times that I have wasted life. All the times that I didn't see what was around me, didn't take my opportunities, didn't pay attention to where I was at. And I didn't understand it before, it was too late. And now I'm not longer a student, I'm not longer young, but I've become a mom. And it hits me that I'm still hit by the same, same things, the same um, problems or situations sometimes. I'm missing out. My kids tell me, oh mom, too late, oh mom, you missed that, no, oh, mom, again, you didn't see. You know, because I was too busy with this one, looking at everything that is important, that I might think is important right now, and I'm missing out. Or I'm occupied by my own thoughts, by my own problems. Sometimes that's why I miss out. There's a before, and there's an after, and there's a middle of. And today I'm going to talk a bit about the middle of. When we were in the COVID times, uh, I spoke to you a couple of years ago uh, in, in that time, we needed to survive, we needed to, to get through the days, we needed to, to deal with this emergency crisis that we were suddenly in the middle of every day and every one of us. Uh, and some of us did very strange things, maybe we, we were just walking, or we were just watching many series, or we were just drinking too much, or eating too much. We just needed to cope with the situation. And we didn't do that in only strategic ways, we did that maybe in ways that wasn't that helpful even. But sometimes we found other ways of dealing with things, and taking care of ourselves, and being good to others, when we were in that situation. But what now, when we ha have other opportunities, when we can maybe start to continue a bit with our lives, step by step, what now? How do we appreciate the life that some of us have gotten back when we can do other things again? What do we do that then? When I was 20 years old, I had this very old friend, she was like, 40 and for me I'm 40 now and I don't know if I think the same now but when I was 20 40 was a lot and I was studying together with uh, with this woman and she really appreciated every day at school she was sitting there with the books and she was so grateful for the teachers she was really cheerful that she had got this opportunity to live and to learn and to study because she had lost about 20 years of her life it had been taken away from her she had been abused she had been captured and she didn't have that freedom that i've had and i didn't see what was around me and i wasn't that grateful for it even when i got the opportunity to study that she was and it made me think, what did I, what did I didn't see? I was waiting for the next lunch break, but she was waiting for the next hour, the next class. So what do you want? How do you appreciate every day in your life? What's your focus? And when it comes to your dreams and your goals, how are you working to get there? Because they will not only come to you, you need to work to fulfill your dreams and to fulfill your goals. 
we can put up the next picture. Sometimes we are just in that bubble where it's about us. Okay, I'm sorry, I forgot to give you that one. You can just, yeah, you have that, thank you. Sometimes we're in that us and we just do what everyone else is doing. And we don't think clearly about why are we doing that and why are we not doing more individual things sometimes. We just follow the crowd. I tried an experience at home. I don't know if my brother remembers if he's here. Um, I tried this experience. We were talking and we were uh, interacting together and I did like that. And the next one did like that and the next one and the next one and suddenly we were just quiet. And then I put it down. And we start talking again. And the other one put it down. And the third one put it down. And then I took it up again. And I started doing something else. And I was getting quiet. And the other one did the same thing. And I was putting it down. It was very interesting for me to see how that was in my own family. We live in different groups. And that's not a negative thing to be in a group. We need to belong in different kind of groups and we are in different kind of families and friendship. But we also attend in different snap groups maybe and work groups. And some things are gathering us, something are, um, there's a reason why we're in this group. But sometimes we also need to find out what is uh, different from, where, where are we different from each other? Who am I? Not only um, in what I have in common with you, but also who am I different from you? In the couple of weeks, I've been thinking about this a lot because I have been talking to many different kind of persons that are kind of struggling with the same things. They're in different kind of age and in different kind of groups, and they're asking me, "How do I? How do I um, make myself a bit more?" visible in this group? How do I take a stand when it comes to this and that in this group? Um, are, am I going to be quiet or am I going to speak up? Because they are watching something and they are thinking that they don't, want to, they don't want to participate in this anymore. And they are asking me, should I quit? Should I like end this friendship? Should I step out of the group? Or is there another way? And sometimes our groups, they don't, um, they feel that if someone takes another stand and makes their another opinion, it's a threatening to the group. But sometimes we might need to challenge that because that's how I see who am I indifferent from you, not just what we have in common. And maybe that's important for us to not lose ourselves in these different groups that we are attending in. I really looked up to that, that woman I was studying because she was not afraid of showing who she was. And that didn't make her, uh, make us want her out of the group, but she affected the group in a positive way. She made me think of how do I look at my life and my opportunities? And what do I miss out? I want you, if you have that opportunity now, to write down what kind of important values that is particularly for you. You can write down three things that is important to you. And if you write like friendship or family, try to be more specific about what is important to you when it comes to your time there, how you act when you're there together with your friends. How does it look like? How does your values look like? Okay, I'll give you a couple of minutes there. The reason why I ask people to write down what's important to them is that we forget. We forget what's important to us. And suddenly we live one day, one week, one month, many years without thinking how do I want to spend my life? Am I living close to my goals or not? Or I'm just moving along with everyone else? Who am I indifferent from the people around me? 
that makes me act differently or take up the decisions and priorities. After COVID, we saw that people are still living as they did during COVID, when they were in the middle of the crisis. Many people are still living that way because they haven't noticed that we're in another time with other, other opportunities. There was a student, she used to go out every weekend. She used to hang out with her friends and to visit people. And now she's looking forward to hang out with Netflix and watch another episode of her series. That's become her new daily goals. A young couple, they used to invite people over for dinner because it meant something to them to make a difference in the neighborhood. It meant something to their family. Their, it was kind of their value to introduce their kids to different kind of people around the dinner table. <laughs> Suddenly they stopped inviting people because of COVID and they have forgotten to take their life back and continue with what they had in mind about what was important, about some of the goals they had for their family. Many people went to church and then COVID happened and they started to stay at home and they found out, I don't need the fellowship. I can talk to God by myself. And they stopped visiting the church. They stopped, stopped uh, taking part of the fellowship that gave them something that might, they might need that could be helpful in the hard times. And that's what's different. We learn to live without and we survived, we managed somehow. But that also has become, for many of us, our new comfort zone, our new daily habits. And I believe we need to take our life back, what was important to us. In the school that I'm working as a counselor, they, they visit different kind of countries uh, and we want them to, different, to, to visit countries with another culture to learn and to start also appreciate their own life because some of them are very spoiled and they don't know more than just what's around them here. So we need to widen their, their view so that they can see more. But what we experienced even before COVID is that those students that got this very great gift and opportunity, they were afraid of missing out. But now they were afraid of missing out what was here. They wanted to go back to the hostel instead because it was better wifey. Instead of being with the people they met, try to take part in this culture that was so different from their own. Seeing that nature or those animals or whatever it was that were different from what they had in, in, uh, in here in Norway. But they were afraid to miss out what was going on here. We saw this many years ago and I think it's kind of ironic because FOMO is becoming a new uh, thing that people are saying they are fair, the fear of missing out and I'm afraid that we miss out because we're too up to occupy what's going on in here, to focus on what's going on in here. So we miss out of here. I started to, uh, I, I talked to some youth about this a couple of weeks ago, and it was kind of interesting to me because they were 19, 20 years old. So most of them are not parents yet, but they started to talk about who am I going to be when I become a parent? How do I want to spend my days when I become a parent? And how am I going to invest now for those coming days? It was kind of a wise conversation. How am I going to invest now to become that kind of father or mother who might be um, aware of the people around me, aware of my kids to be there? How am I going to start now so that my habits might be helpful when I come in that situation? because they knew, I hope they knew, that you need to invest early to reach your goal in the future. You can't start there. You need to start in the good days to prepare for the worst. Because when we're in the worst days and we have all these emotions, it's not very easy for us 
to get connected to the part of the brain we need to get um, to think new or to think strategic or to think consequences then we're just focusing on how to survive so what are we going to do now how are we going to build character now to be that kind of parent in the future you can put up the next picture there is a man called John Bowlby uh, he's a British psychiatrist and child psychologist and he has worked on uh, um, a theory about attachment and he found that children not only were in need to be held and held uh, physically but also mentally to develop healthy and we needed to be received in a way that feels loving to grow and not every parent are good at that because we haven't learned it you know we go to school for all this, these things but most of us are not going to school to be a parent so we're, we're just lucky or unlucky with our parenting and the children who are growing up with us are lucky or maybe unlucky sometimes there are many ways of, of showing love and some of us are very good with words some of us are better with actions and with maybe hugging or laughing or doing things together some people are better at doing things for others and being helpful so we show, them, show love in very different kind of ways but that's how we build good, good relations we are together we are looking at each other we are smiling to each other and we're giving some kind of response to each other and that's how the children are being aware of themselves seeing that I'm unique I'm not just one in, in the group but I'm unique and we have different kind of stage for development when 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 the kids grow up they also start to take place and say no and showing who am I indifferent from you and that can be challenging for us and I know it's very challenging for the children as well because as I said as parents we don't deal with that that very good not all the time at least when we have a lot of stress in our own lives and sometimes we just need to uh, to figure out how are we gonna hold them and keep them safe and when are we gonna challenge them because they also need to find their own ways in life and figure out how am I gonna manage on my own as you are in the, the age you are now you're managing your life on your own and when you're five you're not able to do that and you're not supposed to do that so we need to be aware when are we going to hold and when are we going to let go and that's kind of challenging for parents sometimes but what happens is um, that we gain this confidence and we get ready in some some ways to take a stand and to figure out who am I indifferent from you and this is about identity and that can bring us to the next picture many of us we're missing out and I'm thinking that uh, sometimes I miss out on my children and sometimes I need to rethink how am I gonna do things differently so that I don't come to this situation that many times that I might do different, different things to my children that are not helping them that may be more harm, harmful to them and sometimes we need to think that when we're together with our friends with our friends how do I want to uh, be when I'm around my friends how do I want to give feedback and respond to my friends there's a book called who you are when no one's looking and it's about building character and when I read that one I was thinking that most of our important choices are the ones that we do in the hidden places when some people are coming to therapy for help when some parents see what they're doing and they want to get help it can be shameful it can be hard to admit so we try to do it maybe a bit hidden 
And maybe we just need to sometimes be honest with our friends that, you know what, I'm not doing that very well as a parent these days. I think I might need some help. Do you have some advice? Uh, maybe I'm not in a good place right now myself. Uh, maybe we can try to be a bit more open about it and it wouldn't be that hard to talk about. But many of our small steps and important steps happens in the hidden places. Who do you want to be? And how do you invest? Because it can be hard to do something else than do something different than everyone else. It can be hard for us and it may be a bit new to us to be visible and to do, uh, do things differently than the people around us. But what I've come to learn when it comes to character, when it comes to good habits, uh, we need to work on it for good time. It's not done in one day. It takes effort, many small steps. And sometimes I arrange, um, I, I say my goals to a friend that can um, talk to me about uh, after a couple of weeks and ask me, how are you doing with that goal? <laughs> so that I'm being held, held responsible for, for my goals and what I want to achieve. But maybe um, if I think um, that I'm only talking to you, I, I hope you know that I'm also talking to me. I'm talking to all of us because this doesn't count only for the young one, young people and adolescents. This also count, counts for that grandfather that wants to be another kind of grandfather and who needs to to take a stand. How kind of what kind of grandfather does he want to be? I came home one day. And um, I was asked, uh, I, was, I was getting this note from my daughter. It said, no mobile phone at the dinner table. And I was like, what? I'm, I'm not doing that. We don't do that in our family. You know our house rules. And she said, but mom, you know, in the end of the meals, sometimes, very often actually, you or dad, you check things you know, very important things, or I, I think that was my sentence. You know, this because we have many very important things that we need to check and we need to answer. But she had a point. Because we are trying in different ways to be together. And we're trying to help our children to, to stay focused and right here, right now. And we have talked about when we eat together, we put the full day. But even for me, that can be hard if I have it in my pocket or next to my plate. So I've started to put it on a shelf that is far enough away from me to, to reach. And that's helpful. That helps me to put it that far away. But sometimes I forget and I need to take back that new habit that I start to, to, uh, to do so that I can help myself being more distant, being more, being more um, where I'm at and not thinking about where I should be and what I'm afraid of miss out. And that makes me no longer miss out that much what's around me because I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out my children showing me things that they have learned even though not, maybe not everything is that very interesting. I don't want to miss out. And I don't want to miss out when my husband had this thing in his face that makes me wonder, is something wrong? Are you worried? Have you slept well? Are you okay? I don't want to miss out of that. And I don't know about you, what you're missing out of, but it's probably something. Maybe it's someone, someone who tries to get eye contact with you. Someone, I don't know, who tries to flirt with you. Someone who tries to get your attention or to someone who did maybe give some response to what you were saying, but you didn't get that response in his face. Or maybe you have a teacher who have had a bad day or a bad week and who might be grateful for more enthusiastic and more present student. I don't know. Uh, but I'm positive that you make a difference and it makes it different what you have decided how you have decided to take place, whether you're a student or a teacher or a father or a grandmother, it makes a difference what you choose to do and how you choose to do it with your priorities, 
how you invest, the way you give feedback affects others, their self-image and their self-confidence, whether you support them and you're there for them or you challenge them, it affects them. Right now, it happens. So don't miss out. Okay, that's all I had for today. I hope it, I didn't waste your time. I hope it was useful in, in some kind of way. I'm cheering for you and uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Goro. Uh, it's yet again a thought-provoking presentation by you. Are you able to hear me, madam? Yes, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, I think uh, uh, you have covered almost all the areas, particularly a child being saying that they have to care by me and also challenge me. That was a very good concept which you have uh, explained. And also, uh, how to stand different. That is also much more important thing. Uh, and I hope uh, our participants will also have some uh, uh, questions or some clarification. Uh, now the session is open uh, to the online and uh, offline participants. If you have any clarification or if you want to ask something to the resource person, you can ask them. Thank you, ma'am. You are done very well. Keep on doing it and every month of one time. Thank you so much. It really we learn so much of things through your message, through your counseling reports. Thank you so much. If it is possible, you can connect every month while this one time or two times, monthly one times, uh, two times. <laughs> to come back and teach you? <laughs> I think, I think, uh, Oh, yes, uh, of course, uh, these are all uh, the expectations of many people that this type of resource person should come often. But however, uh, we have been planning to connect this resource person on this platform for more than three months. So, uh, so how it happens, but I think uh, if you have any question, uh, you will definitely do. Over to the next part. Sir. Can I, can I just uh, respond? I just want to say thank you so much for, for saying that and I would thank you for this opportunity. You know this is a very great challenge for me to, to do my lecture in uh, and not in media. Uh, and if it's helpful for you, I'm very grateful to hear that. Uh, because we live in different, uh, different places in the world and I think it's a wonderful thing that we might still have something that connects us and that gives meaning uh, to you. Thank you so much for, for telling me that. I'm very grateful. Thank you, thank you ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. God bless you too. Okay, have a nice day. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, yes, How to manage 
ஆஃபீஸ் ட்ரெஸ் அண்ட் ஹோம் ட்ரெஸ் மேம் What was that a question for me? How to How manage to... office stress and the home stress? That was interesting. Oh, I sorry I didn't I didn't hear the last one. How to how to manage Yes. home stress, stress. and office stress. Uh, stress at home and the office stress, stress at office. Okay, stress. Yes. Uh there's a large question. I will I oh, sorry. When one, one minute. I forgot I've taken down my camera. Can you can you end the presentation? And it's easy for me to. Yeah, yeah. It's a very uh, very important question and and uh, it's a big question. Um I think uh, when it comes to stress, we need to figure out what we can do something about and what we cannot do something about. Uh when I was talking earlier about the storms that are coming in our lives, some of them we we can um uh, maneuver and we can kind of um plan that might be not that large storms but some things will happen like sickness and uh maybe illness and some kind of difficulties in life might come and we cannot always do something about those things but when it comes to our routine and when it, when it comes to talk about the expectations or the plans for Uh, what are coming we can do something about that when i have stressful mornings with my children um it it helps me to after a couple of days i see a pattern and i can see what is helpful if i get up a bit earlier and if we have like found what they're going to wear the day before that we have planned what are we going to make for the lunch break something like that the day before we are less stressed in the morning i get a better i get to become a better mom and my son doesn't get that sad because he has a mom that is yelling because she had planned but <laughs> not that good so when we can plan uh the day before it's easier for us to to meet the day after than if we start the same day to figure out what am i going to wear today what am i going to do today who am i going to meet today uh and also when it comes to work we have a lot of me- meetings at work and we try to to plan them a bit sooner than the same day you know we ask a couple of days ahead and ask them where when can you meet me when can we talk about this so that we just don't talk about it uh when it comes up in our mind because then the other person is not focusing on that he's thinking about something else in his mind so we try to ask each other can when can we have the meeting when are we going to talk about this because we need more time and sometimes at least for me when i'm talking to people and people always want to talk to me today you know they are having troubles and difficulties in their life and emotion now and i i'm telling them i would love to hear but i want to be present in that conversation can we meet tomorrow at 12 o'clock so i don't just say yes to everything right here right now I say can you wait uh, when can we meet and when it has gone one day and when one day has has come that person is more calm is more focused and maybe some of the problems aren't that big anymore so what you can do something about try to figure out what you can do something about and use the words wait and I will find the time not always yes 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 because <laughs> that can be adding more stress yes Good afternoon, Mr. Mahesh. Uh, my question is uh, how to manage uh, time properly uh, from college and uh, home. Yeah. Are you think? Are you thinking about this, the study time and and the spare time, or the family life? He was more specific about the time time management. Time management. Yeah. Uh if if I understand you correctly uh, how to prioritize uh, your time when it comes to study and uh, things that are not uh, school. 
Um, I try to, um, I think very often, you know, our nature and even for us, we need to sleep. We need the breaks. It's not always helpful to, to read and read and study and study for one more hour. It's helpful to take a walk because when we're walking, our, our brain gets to, pro to process what we have uh, read and what we have studied. And we see things differently when we are moving and using our body than when we're sitting and reading, for example. So the breaks are helpful for the study. And uh, that's how I think when it comes to school and, and home, try to be focusing, what are, we, what are you doing when you have your breaks, when you're not reading or studying or using your brain? What, what are you doing instead? Are you playing? Are you laughing? Are you doing things with your friends or helping someone? Uh, because it's good for us to do different kind of things. And I know for some of us, we're doing very much one thing. And when we come home, we are kind of doing the same thing, just in another area, instead of thinking of the var variation and uh, to do different kind of things and use different kind of uh, uh, different things in our body, like the brain and the body. Uh, we need to. Both. Thank you very much for uh, patiently answering all the questions. And uh, once again, on behalf of the uh, Department of Social Work, Peri Arman, Institute of Science and Technology, we would like to thank you, Madam, for the time and uh, the presentation which you have done. And uh, particularly, we want to thank Ivan also for uh, coordinating and uh, uh, making this uh, happen uh, from your Norway and so. Uh, my Vice Chancellor also joins here to thank uh, both of you for uh, this presentation. Thank you so much, Madam. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Shrivan, okay, good luck. Want to say something, Shrivan? Maybe left, huh? Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. Okay. So we, we will be passing on to the next session. Thank you. That was some beautiful piece of insights we have heard from our chief guest. Thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to call Ms. Tabarul, first year MSW, to introduce our guest, Dr. Shubakumar Kalyamurthy. A very good afternoon to one and all gathered here. I'm glad to introduce our board, Dr. K. Sivakumar Kalyamurthy. He's a teacher. He guides various students of MA by teaching social work in life skills education. And also he primes, primes with importing life skills in the counseling for mental health. And his educational qualifications are MA in English Literature, MA in Medical and Psychotic Social Work, MPhil in Psychotic Social Work, and he cleared UGC for lectureship and also PhD in Social Work. His academic award, awards are Sevalia Jagannathan Medal for an outstanding academic performance in English at St. Joseph's College, Tirchrapalli. Dr. Selvaraj Daniel Medal for Best of Fieldwork Performance at Bishop Keepers College, Tirchrapalli. He also published many books and journals. Our guest, Dr. Sivakumar Kalimuthi, has various work experience in various fields. He is presently working as Head Department of Social Work, Urumbu Dhanalakshmi College, Trichy. Totally, he is a, a great man who is the best at what he do. Thank you. I would kindly invite Dr. Shivakumar Kalyamurthy to deliver a speech on the topic Family Dynamics and Behavior of Adolescents.
happy to meet you online. Hope to meet you one day. Right. So, I'll jump into that topic. We have very less time. We have to conclude before, but I try my best to finish. So we are going to talk about family dynamics, dynamics. and the behavior of and the behavior of
the togetherness is called as cohesion. So in a family, first of all, parents should come together, husband and wife, and as a family, and uh, uh, there can be siblings also, siblings and the whole family should be. In India, you know, we have a joint family system in some, some places. It is reducing now, here we have mostly joint family system, now we have nuclear family system, right, or extended family system. So, uh, all the, the position is, was better. Now, in nuclear families, the position is coming down, the token is coming now. There are problematic uh, patterns like zero mutuality, that is, they behave as if they are very together when they are guests in the house. When there are uh, visitors, they behave as if their family is functioning so good and they perform, they act actually, it will be like drama only. Then, so the whole, uh, these, these were given by uh, studies by Wayne et al. These things, uh, when this kind of confusing patterns are there, there are chances for the adolescents, children to become abnormal or get into emotional and psychiatric problems. Next slide, please. In cognition, there can be marital skew and marital schism. Skew means unevenness in relationship. That somebody is giving a parent, a mother is giving him, father is dominating like that. Then uh, schism is there will be direct split. You are different, I am different. We are living here, but we are not together. So that can be witnessed by the children. When children witness all these confusing patterns, they get confused. They don't have take the take home, take the values from the home. The home should be teaching good values. But if that is absent, children try to take values from outside. There can be alliances and coalition, that is uh, two family members getting together and fighting with other, uh, they may be scapegoating other person, all that. Next slide, please. Coalition will be continued. Next, next slide, please. So we should have clear boundaries in the family. That is what the system theory says. We should have a parental subsystem, sibling subsystem, and the boundary should be strong, it should not be loose. They should not admit others inside the boundary. For example, parental boundary, children should not enter. And parents should not disturb much the sibling boundaries, siblings as subsystem, so that they will have some freedom. As siblings, they should have some freedom to discuss. Like that parents have their freedom to discuss their issues. Then there should be healthy connectedness or healthy separateness. Healthy connectedness is the best. Okay? We are together as a family, we are living happily, we are under one roof, so we run a life, happy life. Separatedness is, yes, we are existing, we don't fight with each other, we won't disturb each other, we are pulling on. Then, emotional case is too much of pollution. Too much of pollution is also not good. And the estrangement is, there is no good connection in the family, Somebody is somewhere, not at all connected, always. Now the mobile phone is making its efforts to making this estrangement. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Then, to prevent all these things, we should have family rituals. That is, time together in the family. What can be time togetherness, eating together, going to temple, church together, going for picnic, all these things. Time out with families or time with families at home, story time, all these are family rituals with which we can improve the cohesion. With which we can improve the cohesion. Fine. Next. Reinforcement is the way in which the family teaches rules and regulations for the children. There are ruleless families. There won't be any rules. No one cares. That can be done. Or there are parents who show interest.
consistent parenting. That is, father is permitting, mother is very strict. My father is very good, very nice person, very, very lenient, he plays with me, he allows everything, all that. So, child will have attachment with the father. So, mother becomes a very bad person, bad mommy. Mommy is very bad, like that, they will tell. So, children will learn how to manipulate parents. When there is inconsistency in parenting, when the parenting is not consistent, Children learn how to cheat or manipulate parents. That is going to be a difficult time for the father who was permitted. When the child becomes an adolescent, father will understand his mistake. Oh, now he is taking a different turn, a picture and a thing. He will feel very sorry for the for that kind of parent. Next slide, please. Role performance. That is, the family will have defined roles for each one. Mother should do these things, father should do these things, children have these responsibilities. That is, each family member, according to his age and capacity, should take some responsibility. If only one person is having everything on, for example, there are mothers who take everything, working domestic, house, as a house, housewife, homemaker, then as a school teacher, again a tuition teacher, all that. She will be playing multiple roles, but there will be lazy persons in the house who are irresponsible. So, these patterns also, they will learn. Children will learn, and uh, as I said, the, if you find a person who is not responsible, whom, whom should you blame? Whom should you blame if you find a person or lesson who is not responsible in taking initiatives? The family. Family. Family has not taught him to take the responsibilities. That's all. Next slide. Problem solving and stress coping. This also we learn from our parents. How my father tackled the problems in his life, I will learn from my father or mother. If they exhibited escapism or they resorted to some other place of uh, malfunctioning or uh, some other resort, I too can become one. I too can copy and take up or copy maladaptive patterns of coping. My life is, for example, taking result to alcohol or drugs like that. So, if he takes morals from the parent, he will become an emotionally disturbed child adolescence and even an adult. So, they take morals from the parents. Next slide, please. The law almost are really getting so close. So, uh, social support. Social support system is our neighborhood. It begins from our neighborhood. Our uh, social activities, uh, taking part in functions in the neighborhood, uh, church, temple, or uh, other mutual aid with the neighbors we get and give. And uh, children will take models from the parents. How we relate, how the family relates with the environment or society, child will take models. If they are having, showing good adaptations in the neighborhood, child also will be happy and having no problem in socialization. So our socialization and ways of behaving and connecting with people will influence the children. Next slide please. So you should understand from this picture that behavior of children is at the center and each and every component of the 
family dynamics or family interaction is connected or connected. Everything is connected. Can you see all the arrows are connected to the center? They are all interrelated and they are influencing the behavior of children. This is a very important uh, concept from the theory. Next we have discussions. Next slide please. I have actually rushed through keeping time in mind. So it's open for this discussion. If here, you not uh, go on and you can come here and talk. Everything good 
to make this even grand success. First, I would like to thank our Vice Chancellor for giving a constant support and motivational words to our social work department. I am also happy to record my sincere thanks to Dr. George Dean Academy, who is always giving a moral support and also motivating to the Department of Social Work, Social Development Activities. Apart from that, he guided us to develop our professional development. My sincere thanks to Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Madam, Dean of Kacharam, for motivating us and also selfless support to our social work department. Let me express my deep gratitude and a heartfelt thanks to my dear sister, Giro, for accepting our invitation. She always support to do international events like this. Apart from that, she also doing uh, many support to our social work department even during the time of pandemic situation also. She has given a special access to the working social work students to develop their skills and knowledge during the time of pandemic situation. At the same time, this is the same way Today she gave a great presentation on life after COVID and how to build a character and also thought provoking presentation to the adolescent community. I also thank Dr. Sivakumar for his very much resourceful talk on family dynamics and the behavior of adolescents. He is a good teacher good trainer and also successful therapist in mental health. This is the right time to convey my gratitude to Dr. Anand Jarak Sebastian for interesting me with such a huge responsibility. He is a dynamic leader, motivator. Apart from that, he is a perfect teacher. So that he is helping us so well. And also I would like to thank my colleague from Mr. Dr. Parmeshwaran for his continuous support to the department as, as well as uh, conducting this event grand success. I will be paying my duty if I don't think my brother Irene and Matthias from Malawi and Norway they are, they are doing many kind of social activity through the students' volunteers. Apart from that, they are connecting many countries to develop vulnerable community. So this is the time to thank themselves also. I thank Mr. Matthias Alfonso Boy from the Malawi and Lucas from Zambia. I would like to thank various institutions from the abroad, from the India, Ministry of Agriculture from Malawi, Lusco West Day Secondary School from Zambia, DMI. AQ University from Zambia, Job for Development, Norway, Sajan Dot College, College of Health and Science, Malawi, and participants from the Indian institution, Guru Dhanachmi College, Tirchi, Ariana Government Arts and Science College, Mushri, Balidasan University, Tirchi, Nehru College of Arts and Science, Koyamutur, Jamal Muhammad College of Autonomous Tirchi, Hans Rover College, Paramalur. These are all the institutions participated from the abroad and India. Apart from that, I would like to express my sincere thanks to 
all the participants participated very enthusiastically in this event i also thank my students friends from the department of social work they have the pillar support for this event conducted in the grand success manner i acknowledge this institution contribution to the this international seminar i also return my sincere thanks to our technical team for making this even through live channel through youtube and zoom platform i would like to thank ramesh sir ilogo it ilogo sir and also i would like to thank entire team of our team if i i apologies i also return my sincere thanks to education department because the participants directly participated from the education department they are going to handle the children's in the school so that this international symposium on cycle mental health and psychological well-being of adolescents will be helpful to the this participant will handle the children in productive manner i also apologies if i forget any names those who are supported directly or indirectly once again i would like to thank each and every one of uh, this event successful grand success so thank you very much we have arranged tea and snacks for the uh, for the participants so please be be seated here we will be having tea and snacks within few minutes before before that we would like to expect your feedback from the participants chat box vandu nama feedback form vandu potrukom ungalku certificates vandu generate pannadhukku half an hour time nam potu 10 minutes aachu nam 20 minutes la neenga generate pannirenga adukku varana response vandu stop pannidavanga chat box la potrukom ungala names ella vandu ஒரு வேலை குரூப்ல ஆட் பண்ணிருந்தோம்னா குரூப்லயும் இருக்கும் அதுல இருந்து ஃபீட்பேக் போங்க நீங்க இமிடியட்டா ஃபீல் பண்ணி உங்களுக்கு தேவையான சர்டிபிகேட்டை ஜென்ரேட் பண்ணிக்கிட்டீங்க இந்த ப்ரோக்ராம் பத்தியான ஃபீட்பேக் வந்து நீங்க யாரும் இங்க ஸ்டேஜ்ல சொல்றாங்க சொல்லலாம் இப்போ இந்த சோசியல் ஒர்க் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸா இருக்கட்டும் பிஎட் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸா இருக்கட்டும் யார் வேணாலும் இந்த ப்ரோக்ராம் பத்தி ஃபீட்பேக் சொல்லணும்னா இமிடியட்டா நீங்க வந்து சொல்லுங்க இது முடிஞ்ச பிறகு நமக்கு ஒரு குரூப் போட்டோ வந்து இருக்கு சோ அதை முடிச்சுட்டு நம்ம போவோம் தேங்க்யூ Thank you.